This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. The placement of umbilical catheters is an essential technique for the treatment of many newborns in unstable condition. This video will demonstrate the placement of catheters in the umbilical vein and the umbilical artery. Careful preparation, sterile technique, and attention to detail are instrumental in successful catheter placement. We will demonstrate the regional anatomy of the umbilicus, indications and contraindications for the insertion of an umbilical catheter, the recommended technique for catheter placement in both the umbilical artery and vein, selected complications associated with the procedure, and suggestions for how to avoid them, and appropriate aftercare of the catheter. Umbilical vein catheterization may be indicated for emergency vascular access, monitoring of central venous pressure, exchange transfusion, and central venous access in infants requiring long-term parenteral nutrition. Umbilical artery catheterization is indicated for frequent measurement of arterial blood gases, continuous monitoring of arterial blood pressure, angiography, and occasional resuscitation. The umbilical vein is considered the optimal vessel in this situation. The contraindications are similar for both vessels and include omphalocele, gastroschisis, omphalitis, and peritonitis. In umbilical artery catheterization, evidence of vascular compromise in the lower limbs or buttocks and necrotizing enterocolitis are considered additional relative contraindications. Within the Horton's jelly of the umbilical cord, the arteries are located lateral of midline in the inferior portion of the cord, positions 5 and 7 on the face of a clock. In a full-term infant, the artery is approximately 7 centimeters from the umbilicus to where it joins the internal iliac artery. The umbilical vein is a larger midline vessel with thinner walls, located at position 12 on the face of a clock. In a full-term infant, it is 2 to 3 centimeters in length and 4 to 5 millimeters in diameter. After the procedure has been explained and consent obtained from the parent or parents, review the records and examine the patient to confirm that there are no contraindications to catheterization. In your examination, concentrate on the anatomic landmarks. You must then decide how deeply to place each line. The umbilical artery catheter, or UAC, can be placed in a high-lying position between thoracic vertebra number 6 and 9, or in a low-lying position below the third lumbar vertebral body. Here, we will describe the procedure for the placement of each type of catheter. There are many acceptable methods for determining the appropriate depth of placement. To calculate the depth for inserting a high-lying UAC, multiply the weight in kilograms by 3 and add 9 centimeters, then measure and add the length of the stump to this value. To calculate the appropriate depth for the umbilical vein catheter, or UVC, insertion, multiply the weight in kilograms by 3 and add 9 centimeters, divide that total by 2, then add 1 centimeter. Standardized graphs for determining the depth of catheter insertion are available and they are included in the supplement. To ensure the highest level of sterility, the operator should wear a sterile gown and gloves, as well as a surgical cap, mask, and face shield. In addition to these items, most of the equipment can be found in commercially prepared kits and should include skin preparation solution, a surgical drape with central opening and or sterile towels, sterile 4x4 gauze, a three-way stopcock with a lure lock, one for each catheter port, a 5 or 10 milliliter lure lock syringe, one for each port, a number 11 blade scalpel, saline or heparinized flushing solution, straight iris scissors, three mosquito hemostats, two smooth curved iris forceps, one toothed mosquito hemostat, an umbilical tie, suture, and a needle driver. 
there are numerous types of umbilical catheters from which to choose. A 5 French arterial catheter should be used in infants weighing more than 1.2 kilograms. A 3.5 French arterial catheter should be used in infants weighing less than 1.2 kilograms. Arterial catheters should have a single hole and be as non-thrombogenic as possible. The umbilical vein catheter should be 5 French for infants weighing less than 3.5 kilograms and 8 French for infants weighing more than 3.5 kilograms. Consider using a venous catheter with side holes when the catheter will be used for exchange transfusion. Otherwise, venous catheters can be single or double lumen and should have one hole. The infant should be placed in the supine position on a radiant warmer. The infant's arms and legs should be secured to avoid movement that might contaminate the sterile field. Sedation is generally not needed because the skin is typically not cut or punctured with a needle. Make the necessary measurements to estimate the depth of catheter insertion. After you are fully scrubbed and garbed to perform the procedure, attach a stopcock to the hub of each catheter and fill the system with flushing solution. Be sure each stopcock is in the off position. Ask an assistant, who need not be wearing a sterile gown, to grasp the cord by the cord clamp and apply traction vertically. Apply antiseptic solution to the cord and surrounding skin. Apply sterile towels or surgical drape in such a way that the patient's face is visible, then wrap the cord tie around the base of the umbilicus and tie with a single knot. The knot should be tight enough to prevent bleeding from the cord, but loose enough to allow the catheters to pass through the vessels of the cord. Cut the cord horizontally with the scalpel, approximately 1.5 centimeters from the skin. Take care not to cut the skin that is at the base of the cord. Ask the assistant to remove the cut cord and clamp from the field. Identify vessels within the cord. Control any bleeding by adjusting tension on the umbilical tie and by blotting, not rubbing, the freshly cut surface. It is feasible for a single operator to place an umbilical catheter successfully. However, we will describe and demonstrate the procedure for the operator working with an assistant donning sterile attire. The assistant should use the toothed mosquito hemostat to grab the side of the cord near the artery to be cannulated and should avoid grabbing the artery. Clamp a curved hemostat to the opposite side of the cord. The assistant should apply traction to these hemostats in opposite directions to stabilize the cord. Using your non-dominant hand, place the closed or pinched tip of the curved iris forceps into the lumen of the artery to a depth of approximately 0.5